standing in front of Valdosta State University, a regional university of the University System of Georgia. And to my left, of course, is, of course, Valdosta State University, a very prestigious college and university who had, that has a long history. However, today I want to talk about any student that attend Valdosta State, how you doing, sister? Valdosta State University can have the same thing happen to them that happened to me on May the 25th. On May 25th, as I was going to the Lowndes County High School graduation, Lowndes County Sheriff Deputy Peel pulled me over and denied me the right to attend that graduation under the title of Criminal Cross Pass Warning. Yet I had broken no law whatsoever. I have never violated any law under the criminal justice system. So for me to be pulled over and banned for 70 days, restricted from any properties at Lyons County school system is a disgrace. But that's not why I'm out here today. The reason I'm here today is because you all are asking me, why is it taking so long for the results of the second autopsy concerning Kendrick Johnson's death that happened on January the 10th and 11th of 2013? As you know, the newspapers, television stations have or should have reported to the general public in South Georgia and the state of Georgia that the GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, have not released the tissue samples. Listen, the tissue samples. And so the Johnson family, their attorney, and I guess the pathologist who did the second autopsy are waiting for the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to send them the tissue samples. Now we know that the first autopsy that the GBI did, it took four months plus. So why are we and you and others so concerned about finding out what actually happened in the death of this 17-year-old black African-American male? We know they say it was an accident. I believe in St. John, 832, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set and make you free. Now, what if, what if there's something wrong with the way the investigation concerning this death took place? by members of local law enforcement, Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and possibly the Federal Bureau of Investigation. What would happen? That could be a very important question. But we can't say either way until truth comes. And always remember that when truth comes into the minds of those who seek truth and those who want truth, then falsehood must vanish, for falsehood is forever a vanishing thing. And so I'm going to close now. But I wanted you all to know that if any student that's attending Georgia Military College, Wiregrass Technical College, or Valdosta State University, The same thing that happened to me could happen to them. In other words, your children that comes to Valdosta could be pulled over by a Lyles County Sheriff's deputy 
although they haven't done anything wrong, and tell them that they are restricted and under a criminal trespass warning that they know nothing about. They could even go further and say, based upon what happened to me, that they have been under that warning for hell. Two weeks, six months, or a year without them ever knowing it. And do you not know that here in the state of Georgia, nobody but nobody seems to care? And if this happened to me, how many more black African Americans and poor white people in particular are serving time in jail or even in prison because somebody lied? Just like the 14-year-old girl's mother who said that a Lowndes County Sheriff deputy falsified statements that her daughter struck a teacher at Pine Grove Middle School. When the teachers wrote out a statement that their daughter never even touched or hit an educator. Now you know that's a felony. How could that be? And should not we care? It's not just a little black girl. It could happen to the little white girl. It could happen to the little Japanese girl. It could happen to the little Indian girl. It can happen to the little Asian girl. It can happen to any of God's human beings. Yet, we say, we do, and we respond to nothing. We're not going to build a better America like that, y'all. Once again, if you want the results back from the second autopsy, please call the GBI, according to the people who know, and in the link and swing of things. Say, call the GBI. If they would only send the tissue samples, I repeat, the family is waiting on the tissue samples. They want to talk to the press. They want the results of this second autopsy released to the public. They can't wait to release it so people can get back to some level of normality in the school system, especially before school starts. And so once again, I do what I do because I serve this nation. 21 years, and I was honorably discharged. And you have a right to know under our form of government. And I am going to continue to do what I'm doing because I do believe in your right to know. I do not want you ignorant. I do not want you deaf, dumb, and blind to the times. And once again, to all the students and the parents that send their children to Valdosta State University. Just as sure as George Boston Rhines had broken no law, yet I was forbidden to enter and still is in my 70th day to enter public property because a member of law enforcement told me that I was on a criminal trespass warning. The same thing could happen to you if you are here in Valdosta or if you are going and visiting Wild Adventures theme park, if you are going to Kindaloo Golf Course. This is the law in Valdosta. They can stop you, according to a mother this morning. They can go into your home without a search warrant. They can throw all of your stuff out on the ground from your vehicle and not be required to put it back in and they don't find nothing. But you have to put the stuff back in your car and they don't even have a search warrant. We are going to do what we do.
to try to help America to do better by its citizens. Once again, we do this because we care. Bye-bye. We gone.